Let's take a look at menu navigation in Trimble FieldLink. Navigating the menus is what separates new users from very experienced professional users. The power users of FieldLink know what menu to go to in order to accomplish what they need to accomplish in an efficient way. The first thing you'll notice when opening up FieldLink are the five menus I have at the top of my screen. If you do not have the scan module, this scan button may not be present. Likewise, if you're on FieldLink Office for desktop, you may only have Create, Measure, and More. The device menu will not be present. Let's start from left to right and give you a general overview of all of the menus. First, we have the Create menu. Anytime I click on a menu at the top, it's going to populate with many more options. For now, just to give you a general idea of the Create menu, think of this as your office work, or as point organization, deletion, and editing. In the Create menu, we will be able to draw known distances and known angles, we can connect the dots with lines or radius. We can edit, create, or delete points in Point Manager, as well as create offsets to lines or points. We can also create points from the model using CAD snap functions, such as midpoints, intersections, and endpoints. Next, we have Grid. If we need to create a standardized distance between points, Think grid lines, we can do that in grid. And pattern, we will be able to create repeatable patterns that we may see present across our job or across many projects. Next, let's jump into the measure menu. Once we click measure, many other options appear. In the large picture, the measure menu is where we typically live when we're working in the field. So, if we are trying to lay out our points, we would go to the Layout menu. If we are trying to gather data, such as the dimensions of a room, or collecting new control points, we can go to the Collect menu. The Wall Penetration tool may or may not be present on your data collector, depending if you have the Advanced Feature Pack or not. This is typically used in MEP situations where we need to find where a pipe or something similar is penetrating through a wall. Next is Layout Plane. This is a menu that you can go to in order to work with elevations efficiently. We can use simple grade, just like a rotating grade laser. We can do sloped grade, or we can lay out to a 3D model. Finally, Settings give us many different settings that we can use in the layout function. For purposes of this course, we will skip over the scan menu and move on to device. When you first click on device, the connection screen will appear. This may appear different depending on which instrument you are trying to connect to. Notice I am on my computer and do not have a radio attached so I don't have the option to connect to a traditional robotic total station. But, right now I do have the X7, my scanner at the moment, popping up and ready to connect. If I click on this and hit connect, let's give it a second so we can see what other options appear on the device screen when connected to an instrument. Now that we've connected to our device, I can click on the device menu again and see the additional options that appear when you are connected. First, we have the connection screen. This is where we can go to check our connection status and disconnect from our instrument once we're completed with our survey. The next menu is setup. This is where we will go to shoot in our control points, whether it's a resection, shooting in two or more known points, or setting up over a known point, or many other options that we will explore later. Reference Elevation allows us to shoot in a specific point in order to set the Z or the elevation of our project during that setup. Turn To allows us to either turn to a point or turn specific angles if we would like to do an angular survey. 
the Tools menu contains tools that you can use without being set up on any control points. These tools include the Tape Measure tool, a plumb tool for plumbing columns or walls, or transferring an elevation benchmark. You may or may not have this security feature on here, but this is where the device's security settings are set, if you require a password on your device to use it. Finally, settings will show us certain settings of our device, as well as specific angles, horizontal, vertical, and slope distances, horizontal distances, etc. As well as on Wi-Fi instruments, Wi-Fi settings in case you're having connectivity issues. Next, we'll go to the More menu. The More menu is where you go to keep your projects organized. We can create new projects here in the Projects screen. We can open different projects, save them to the Connect Cloud, and import and export data. The Map screen, going back a step, simply takes us to our Map view. There are some hidden functions in here with our map tools once we have one imported, which we will go over later. Let's go back to the More menu. Next is Reports. The reports that are in here will depend on which version of FieldLink you have, whether it's the Core Feature Pack or Advanced Feature Pack. These reports can be generated in order to keep track of your project and generate all sorts of data based on the layout you've performed. Next is Trimble Connect. Trimble Connect is our cloud-based sharing and storage platform that you can use to import and export data to. Next is the About menu. This will give you information such as your device's serial number, as well as your version of software and potentially firmware you're running on your instrument. Next, Minimize will take FieldLink to the bottom of your Windows taskbar. You can do this in order to open up email or the internet on your device while FieldLink is still running in the background. Next up, Exit will take us entirely out of FieldLink and you will need to open FieldLink again. That wraps up the overview of Trimble FieldLink. Let's dive into each of these menus next.